He didn't okay. actually listen to Piers. <laughs> <laughs> no one ever does, mate. I mean, just look at his kids. They were about to go to bed 20 minutes ago. Still whispering now. <laughs> <laughs> Did you tell him how much you spent in the game? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh my god. Guys! Last warning! <laughs> You're trying to get to sleep. I'm off at the last warnings. This bit's so going in the video. Hello, you bunch of tankers, and welcome back to the channel. I hope you're all good. I hope I find you well. I hope you have all been out like absolute mad lads and stocked up on hand sanitizer and poo tickets because that just seems to be what the weird people are doing these days. Um, yeah, so. Right, today we're out in the Leo. We are out on Casserine. And I've been grinding up the XP to get the tier 8 Swedish medium when it arrives on Tuesday. Um, now, I do enjoy the Leo. I really enjoyed the Leo the first time through when I was grinding for the cram van. So I kept it. I also kept, basically, I kept everything apart from the Largo from tier 3 up to tier 9. I, I really, really, really enjoyed the Swedish line. I thought it was a fantastic line. The guns are quite derpy, but I do enjoy them. And the Leo with a 75 mil for me is just an absolute bundle of fun. A 1.8 second aim time and a 4.5 second reload time. 2,000 DPM. Yes, please, count me the frig in there. Um, so, yeah, I've come down to G6. Now, I wouldn't normally come here. Normally, I, I go down the K line where we've got a nice little gaggle of tanks now. Between the 4 and the 5 line, there's a nice little area of trees and, and rocks right up against the map edge which is really good to work in a low slung tank like this but what I've been doing recently I've been trying different areas of the map I wouldn't normally go to trying to seek out them different spots so that if somebody gets that position first I've got a fallback plan or if the battle turns in a different way at least I know I've got somewhere I can strategically place myself to try and help defend so that is precisely what happens in this battle the, the, the game starts out pretty well. The Jag Panther 2 kills itself. Excellent. Um, and we mainly stay even for most of the match, but then it kind of flips on us and ends in a 2v7. And that whole trying different areas to try and work different ridges and stuff really does come into play. But do I end up clutching it? Because you all know how average I am, and there's a good chance I absolutely screw it up, and we end up losing. So... Let's get into it. Now, we've got a fair few enemies in front of us. It is a target-rich environment right now. And at this point, I've not really done a huge amount. I've done two pens worth of damage. I've got a little bit of assist. I've only spotted out one tank. So, right now, the position I'm in is not all that useful. But if you look at our team deployment, we've kind of gone for um, a 3-4-2 uh, at present across just one area of the map. And... It's not going well. Um, they've pushed the valley quite hard. I don't. I have no idea why people go down that valley because it is just a death bowl. But they do. Um, but their mediums and this Tiger P have really pushed quite hard down the one-two line, trying to uh, loop around to get to our uh, flag. You know, they've they've actually spread out pretty nicely. They're using the rocks to their advantage, and it is kind of working in their favour. Now, the game does get a little bit. Um, Campy. It's the EU server. Of course it does. Um, it does get a little bit campy around this sort of time. I'm deciding what I want to do. As you can see, I'm sort of moving on either side of this rock thinking I want to push, but I'm trying to preserve my hit points. I really am actively trying to improve my game right now by not rushing. I'm an overly aggressive player. Now, this can either be huge damage gains or it ends up turning in more than likely my demise because it's... Calculated risks, really, are where this game really, really teach you something. Um, there's, there's a lot to be said for aggression, but it needs to be controlled. So, I don't want to push too hard. I'm not in the best position. And, I mean, we've got a heavy down in F3. That's normally me. But I've decided this time to try and be clever and not push too hard. So this is kind of the area I want to be. I'm slightly past halfway, but I can fall back if I have to, to the original position that I was in. 
I really, really, really want to help our friendly uh, heavy tank out because he's getting absolutely pornhub right now. He is, there we go, he just got ganked. So, now I'm the only tank out the front. And this is what I mean, when I normally play aggressive, I will usually get here right at the beginning of the game. Really, really daft idea, to be honest with you, because look how campy my team are. They have not moved since the start of the match. That is never going to work out well when you are the only tank out front. You've got no support. Yes, they could get shots, but the red team have put themselves in such good positions behind their rocks that really, unless some idiot like me pushes forward far too forward than they should be, well, they're not going to be able to spot anything until they get rolled up. Nice little snapshot on the T20 there, and it's around this sort of point I'm thinking, all right, no one's pushing with me. This this is not working. Should I push forward to go and attack? No, no, it's a stupid idea. I get a shot from across the other side. I believe that was the IKV that put one into me, and I decide, you know what? Sod this. This is not going to happen. I'm falling back. Something normally I don't do. I have to actively think about this these days. What I tend to get goes through my mind is, I start to push forward, and in my head I go, hmm, now, if I miss this shot, there's a good chance I could die. What I've been doing recently is if I've been getting that thought in my head, I've not been pushing, I've just been falling back. I've been re-watching older videos of really good previous CCs, um, and really just going back to basics and taking the information on board. So I'm back to my original position. And again, it's not all that good a position because I haven't quite got the gun depression to get it over that ridge without exposing too much of my tank. But somebody needs to be spotting for this team of campers. They really do. And I've taken it upon myself to try and keep this Tiger P lit up and just see if I can get some fire support. I mean, I'm a one-shot. Now, being a one-shot usually means the red team get a little bit over horny and will tend to push you a little bit harder than they should do. So now we finally just decide, right, that position is useless. It's not working. It's time to fall back. And I decide to just come back here with the campers and try and get off as much damage as I can. Our team is now starting to lose quite badly. We've got an Eagle 7 pushing an SU-100M, who is a one-shot for that Eagle. That's going to put us down another tank. And... Yeah, they're slowly, slowly tumbling away. Now that light tank stuck on his own. He's buggering off really, really quickly. So, this Japanese heavy, I apologise. I'm not too sure what it is. I don't know if it's an OI or what. But he has not moved for the entire duration of this match. He drove here from the start and then he stayed there. And, and that was it. And now we are down to two tanks. They were, briefly, down to seven. Now they're down to six. That Tiger P, he's been after me all game. And I'm starting to get a little bit worried. My, my hands are shaking. There's a little bit of sweat coming on the, on the brow. And I'm thinking, okay, I need to use my mobility. That Japanese heavy is not going to move. I have got to start darting around. I've got to start making the enemy think that we could be coming from absolutely anywhere. Because with only two of us in the same position, they can just rush us and annihilate us. So... I load up the skill rounds because I'm a dirty little scrub, and then I decide to go on a bit of a mission. Now, that British Bulldog, he killed our T29. Um, he is a busy boy, making his way over to try and get rid of our Japanese heavy. I take down that IKV. We've already leveled the playing field just enough to help us out. T20 is a one shot. We take him down as well. It's now two versus three. We have taken this thing down from a 2v7 to a 2v3. I get Really, really lucky giving it a Neo from the Matrix. Um, and it's back to the British Bulldog. He's not looking at me. He's looking at our Japanese heavy friend. He's a one-shot. It's now 2v2. We have turned that around very quickly just by trying to come from different directions. And that's exactly what I'm doing again now. That Tiger P last time he saw me, I'd gone into that valley. I decide I want to move. Now, at this point, I was thinking what I might do is fall a little bit further back towards the camp. And then, hopefully, that Tiger P will get drawn into the open ground and I can hopefully take him down. Then I thought, well, that Japanese heavy isn't going to move and I could do with that massive cannon, if anything, just to deter the Tiger P from rushing me. So, yeah, I double back and I end up going pretty much to the spot I would normally go to on this map. 
So in a roundabout way, all the information I gave you about trying different areas was absolutely useless. That's standard me, though, isn't it? So there's the Tiger P. Like I say, he is just calming himself down a little bit because obviously that Japanese Heavy has got a big, big old dirt gun. So, hopefully that's going to hold him there for a little bit whilst I try and use the mobility of the Leo and its fast aim time to get around this Tiger P and try and get myself into a position where I can get nice, fast firing shots on him and put the DPM to use. He's got around 800 hit points left. That, for me, is roughly three or four shots, depending on the rolls. So, whatever I do, I've got to be shooting from somewhere. He can't see me, but I can see him. And that's what we're doing. Now, we've waited for the sixth sense to go off, and now we're going to start deciding where do we want to go from. This side of the map, from where the enemy were before, some really, really nice positions. Now, the Leo's base view range is only 370. But, I have, like I said, got a good crew in this, and the view range on this is pretty damn good now. Japanese Heavy gets... It was an OI! OI gets a shot into the Tiger P and takes him down. Now, all that's left is a Panther M10. The last time I saw this tank, he was on the other side of the valley. Um, he was actually holed up on one of the rock edges, and... He was taking a couple of sniping shots into our tanks that were down the valley. Now, I was wondering, has he fallen back to his base to defend? Because he hasn't been seen. You know, he's not been found anywhere at all. So I thought, perhaps he's gone back to our, their cap. No. He's gone to jump on our cap instead. So, good thing the Leo's fairly mobile. And we scoot our way over as quick as possible. Again, what I want to do with this guy is I want to get to a position where I can spot him out fairly easily and get some shots out before he manages to get shots on me. Our Japanese Heavy, still in the exact same place as he was from the second minute of the game. Has said to defend the base. Oh, I think he's moving. He might be moving. He's moving, boys and girls. He is moving. So, we're going to peek up across this other side. Hopefully the buildings don't block our line of sight. We're going to try and take this panther down as soon as possible. Now, using the view range, you can see, looking at the cone on the minimap, I should be able to see him. There he is. He's behind cover. And I want to take this building down so that we both have shots on him quite easily. And there he is. 80 hit points left. And we managed to do it. We managed to take that 2v7... Turn it round on the enemy and get the win with seven kills. Happy days. I, honestly, I played that game the other night and I was like, right, I've peaked. I'm going to turn it off. I genuinely turned it off straight after. I, I thought that was it. I can't get any better than that. I don't even know why I load the game up anymore anyway. I mean, that's that's my peak. 23,000 XP. I did have a times five on. The times three boost was on because of the ops. Um, Golden Arch, Devastator, Top Gun, 2,597 damage and a nice just shy of 1,200 assist as well. It was a fun round and I genuinely, it got the heart going a little bit. Them long rounds are what we play for. They're always absolutely fantastic games and they're the ones that stick with you more than anything. I hope you enjoyed that, guys. If you did, give me a like. If you didn't, give me a dislike. And if you aren't subscribed, please, please do. Um, just... Ring the bell if you want to be notified when my content comes up. And have fun playing tanks. Um, until next time, guys, have fun, stay safe, wash your bloody hands, and I'll see you in the next one.